Michelle Dolgis is on the line with us, the principal at Penn's Manor High School, brought to you by Marcus and Mecca Law Firm, representing injured people. Michelle, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, we're hanging in there, trying to get through just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I teasingly, when I called you this morning, I, I teasingly said, is this take your your little baby to work day? Because uh, every day is like that for you now. You've got a new baby and you're working from home, huh? Yes, I have. Uh, my husband's a teacher at Indiana Junior High. He's working from home. I have two kids in school. They're both working from home. I'm working from home, and we have a seven-month-old. <laughs> so my house is pretty busy during the day. <laughs> I would guess that it is. And meanwhile, you're still trying to get the job done for your Penn Spanner students. I know it has to be kind of difficult on a school principal to be away from the kids, especially at this time of the year. It is. And, and and like I had said before, every time we think we have everything figured out, 10 other things pop up that we didn't think of. Um, so it's constantly making adjustments and kind of changing things as we go along. So take me back six or seven weeks uh, to when this all began and we started thinking about online education and uh, the, uh, the continuance of education plan and Pence Manor implemented and how it has gone and, and what some of those adjustments have been. Um, well, we, we were fortunate that uh, quite a few of our teachers were already using Google Classroom uh, within their classrooms. So when we had to make the uh, change at the high school um, and across the district, when we had to make the change, uh, it wasn't too much of a shock for the kids. The kids were a little bit used to the Google Classroom, the older kids more than the younger ones. Um, but we had, during Act 80 days, had teachers start doing Google trainings. Um, I know uh during some Act 80 days, we have had some of our teachers who use Google Classroom do presentations for the other teachers and kind of show them how to do things, how to set up their classroom, how to add assignments. Um, so we have done a lot of that prior to this happening. Um, so when it did happen, everybody was a little bit familiar with it, um, but the IU had provided a lot of resources. They had a lot of training sites. Um, Google came out with a site called um, Google, uh, what was it, uh, Google at Home, I believe, or Google Classroom at Home. Mm -hmm. um, so they had a lot of different uh, training videos and things on their, on their site that our teachers were able to watch. So through the progression of it all, uh, we had initially dis elected to do uh, enrichment and review, and that is where the students, uh, it was voluntary for them to get on. There was no grades and no attendance. And throughout the course of it, a lot of the school districts have opted to move to the planned instruction with the attendance and the grades. Uh, we have a lot of students. Our biggest hurdle through all of this has been a large number of students who don't have access to Internet or don't have strong enough Internet. And that has been our, our largest hurdle through all of this. Uh, we have approximately 30 to 40 percent of our students who don't um, have strong enough Internet to participate. Uh, so right now we're sending home approximately 200 packets every two weeks to students, and we've got about 65%, 65 to 70% of our students doing the online instruction. Uh, Mr. Johnson had opted not to switch to the uh, planned instruction. We had opted to stay with the enrichment and review simply because of the number of students who we have that have limited ac uh, access to the Internet. Yeah. So we, we've been doing that, but we've also, through this time, encouraged our teachers to, as they become more familiar with Google Classroom, try different things, try uh, Screencastify, try Flipgrid, try a lot of different programs, try uh, taking a video, putting videos on um, in the event that at the start of next school year we have to be online as well. So the teachers have been using this time a lot to experiment with different uh, activities and experiment with different things. And the kids, the kids are, are doing well. Um, I know as a mother, uh, it was a challenge at first. Uh, I have two boys; they're in kindergarten and third grade. Um, so it was it was an adjustment for them to get used to doing things online. But my my kids are definitely ready to go back to school. They say all the time, "Mom, why can't we just go back to our classes?" Yeah. Uh, they miss their friends. They miss their teachers. And the majority of the parents that I have spoken to all have that same response, that their kids really miss the school environment, the teachers, and the kids think it's a lot harder to do things online than it is when you have somebody in front of you teaching it to you. Yeah, especially at that elementary age. And you have that unique perspective because there you are, you're the high school principal, but you've got that that parent of elementary kids uh, perspective as well. And, uh, and it can be a challenge both ways. 
How do you handle your school responsibilities as the principal of the high school while at the same time helping the kids to get into the flow of their lessons and what they need to be doing on a day-to-day basis? Uh, we, we've, uh, it, it was a little shaky at first, but we've established a routine. Um, at 9 o'clock, my kids log in. Uh, I have, we have, we're fortunate enough that we had two laptops at home. So I have my computer from home, my husband has his, or from work, and my husband has his computer from work, and we have two laptops. Uh, so all four of us have a, a device. Uh, one, one kid sits beside my husband. We have a table set up in our living room. Mm-hmm. Um, and my husband and one of our boys works in the living room. And uh, another, my other son works beside me in our office at the desk. Um, and they, they log in. They've, they've learned the routine now that, for the most part, they're pretty self-sufficient. Uh, usually they'll ask if they have a question. Um, but for the most part, they, they've learned the routine. They know how to click through things. Um, and like I said, we have a seven-month-old, so she's in her walker or she's in her swing and bounces back and forth between us during the day. But uh, <laughs> it's been quite an adjustment. Um, but my kids definitely miss their, their friends and their teachers. And <laughs> Yeah. Well, one of the things that uh, interests me, because I know the parents that must find themselves in this situation, is uh, they might have the devices, they might have the connectivity, which is good for them, and, and not everybody does. But there's also the issue of, uh, what's my data plan like? Am I burning up data, and is it going to be costing me all kinds of extra money? It, every family has to deal with that, too, don't they? It's it's a challenge, uh, and I'll tell you, we've ran into, uh, we give we gave out Chromebooks to families who needed them, who had Internet access and maybe only had one device. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> they maybe only had one device, but they have three students who need to work online. Um, so we've given Chromebooks to families. Um, to try to help, you know, ease that burden a little bit. Um, but the, the Internet connectivity seems to be the largest hurdle uh, that we have faced across everything. And, I mean, there's a lot of families who have Internet, but it is not strong enough to stream the videos, to stream, you know, different things that maybe teachers have online for Google Classroom. Uh, it's not strong enough maybe for, you know, a lot of the accessing the textbooks and things online. A lot of, a lot of when we asked a lot of our students, do you have access to the Internet, they said yes, but a lot of them access the Internet on their smartphones. Yeah. Um, so we, through this process, we have discovered that there's a lot of homes that don't have, um, like, a device with a, a Internet. A lot of them use phones, they use a hotspot, and like you said, it has caused a number of issues for families. So that seems to be our biggest hurdle in all of this. All right. So let's talk about the, the classes themselves that are being held online, or more specifically about the students themselves. You've got a bunch of seniors getting set for graduation that's coming up really, really quickly. We've already missed out on the prom. We've missed out on the spring sports. But graduation's the next big deal. How are the seniors handling it? And, and I'm, I'm sure you're holding meetings with them in some way or another, aren't you? Well, I've been holding meetings with the senior class officers. Um, as the uh, the board ha- would like to hold a formal graduation and a formal prom for the students, possibly if we're able to at some point throughout the summer. Um, what we are planning on doing is on the last student day, I've worked with the senior class advisors and the senior class officers. Uh, I've worked with them, and we've planned a drive-through ceremony um, on the last student day so that students can be awarded their diplomas. Uh, we have some students, we wanted to do something special on the last day of school since a lot of the students, some of them are going on to work, some of them are going to the military, some are going to college. Even if we do hold a ceremony later in the summer, it's not, uh, it's, you know, there's a good chance that a lot of students won't be able to come back for it. Um, so we would like to do something special on the last day of school. We're doing a drive-through ceremony. Um, so each student will be permitted to have two vehicles, uh, a, a maximum of two vehicles, with as many people as they can safely fit into the vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, they will come. We're, we'll do a little ceremony, and then they're going to do a drive-through uh, where they will drive around the school, through the school property, through the parking lots, um, and they will come around. They will. The graduates will be in their caps and downs. They will come over in front of our marquee. Uh, they will be awarded their diploma. We will have their picture taken in front of the diploma. The families will be right there in the vehicle, so they'll be able to watch. Um, and then when the kids get back in and circle around the front of the elementary school, it's going to be lined with teachers and uh, instructional aides, school board members, cleaning cleaning staff, maintenance staff, whoever from the district would like to attend. Uh, we will have those people spread out, um, and they will have signs and, and all kinds of things celebrating the kids' graduation. 
Um, so we would like, you know, that's our way of doing something special for the kids. Meanwhile, you uh, have to get the other kids all up to speed with their schedules for next year, and, and I'm sure that that's a process that will unfold over the summer months. And uh, you you still got a lot to do in this school year, and you still have to look forward to all of the uncertainty of next school year. It's not an easy thing, but you're you're doing the job. We we were actually another area where we were fortunate. We use a learning management or student information system called Sapphire. And last year was the first year that we had students do all of their course requests for next school or for the following school year online. Mm -hmm. Um, So we did that last school year for this school year. And so the kids were familiar with how to get online and request their courses. So it worked out very well for us that we were able to put out a notification to all the families. We opened the window for one week and we were able to have most of the students log in um, and they put in their course request for next school year. So they were able to do their scheduling, and then we only had a small list of students who uh, did not get on and request any courses. Then we had our guidance counselors contact those students individually and get their courses in and get them scheduled. So we were actually, um, that's one one place where we were proactive, and it, it had really helped us. Well, that's terrific stuff. Michelle Dolges, principal at the Fence Manor High School, thanks so much for spending some time with us this morning. Sounds like it's it's going as well as it can be expected to at this time. Yes, thank you very much for having us. And like I said, we're trying to muddle through it with everybody, and I have to say that our teachers and our students have been very, very good through all of this. You know, we're constantly changing our directions, changing things. Um, as we go along, we're kind of, you know, building the plane as we fly it here, and everybody has been very good about making adjustments when we when we ask them to. So I have to say parents, families, students, and teachers have been uh, great to work with through this. And, of course, as we told Darren last month, I went ahead and declared your girls the state basketball champs. So there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. They would have made it anyway, so I agree. <laughs> there you go. Michelle, thanks. Have a great day. Thank you. You too, Todd. There. Thank you. You too, Todd. There. Thank you.